Hi everyone, welcome to Art and Talk. Art and Talk is an online interviewing platform for artists to share their art, creativity, and passion. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. Today we're going to be presenting to you our final artist in the series of artists we've been presenting to you for the past week or so from the Caribou exhibit. The Caribou exhibit is currently on at the Cultural Council of Palm Beach County. Caribou is a Swahili word that means welcome, come in. Today we're going to be exploring our guest artist's paintings, and we're going to be getting into his thought process, his background, and his inspiration. Thank you again so much for watching. I also like to mention that the exhibit, if you're here locally in South Florida, is on until mid-March. If you'd like to take a walkthrough of the tour on a video, you can go to the Cultural Council's Facebook page, or you can go to Art and Talk, and we also have the video on there as well. Please stay connected with us on social media on our YouTube channel, Art and Talk, and also on our Facebook page. Please subscribe, like, and share. We appreciate your support. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk, and I'd like to welcome our guest artist for today, Scott Jeffries. Scott, welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm honored to be here. Oh, it's great. Great to have you here. I'm so excited to kind of dive into your art and, and um, everything about it. But first, can you just give us a little bit of um, the caribou exhibit and how you got involved with it? And then we'll kind of move into your um, art. Sure, sure. So I, I have um, been an artist in Palm Beach. Kind of, I live in Highland Beach, Boca Raton area. I've been here for, in Florida for about 14 years. And I've been working as a professional artist for you know, the past probably eight or 10 years. And you know, along the way, I um, met um, Trina and Anthony Burks, who are the curator of, of the Caribou exhibit. Um, they're very big mentors of mine, um, great people. You know, I'm also a board member with, with Trina, who created the No More Serving Artists Foundation. Um, so I, I, I've been working with them for, for, the, for the past couple of years. And over the past few years, that they've had an uh, African diaspora um, exhibit. Um, every year in different locations, kind of pop, kind of a pop up over the past few years, and I've been involved in that. So I've been one of the um, the artists that they um, I, obviously I apply every year, but um, I've been one of the artists that has been a, 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 one of the mainstays of that exhibit the past few years. So when when the Caribou exhibit came came about, you know, I talked to Anthony and, and, and Trina, and uh, you know, I I I, I told them about the, the the piece that I wanted to do. Um, and just talking about, about the space that was available as well as actually a, a large, a larger piece than I, I might normally do for, for an exhibition. So I talked to Anthony, you know, and Trina about what I wanted to do and the, the meaning behind it. And they, you know, they, they were all for it. And that, that's how I got involved in, in this year's Caribou. Mm -hmm. So it's been a, it's been a long relationship with, with, um, with, with those guys. And this is the first year, as I'm sure you've talked about with other artists, this is the first year that the Cultural Council of Palm Beach has had an all African American exhibition in, in the space, so I'm honored completely to be to be a part of it and to be able to you know be one of the artists that's been with Anthony and Trina and to grow along with them over the the past couple of years and it's it's been a, it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Scott, as far as your um, kind of beginnings and origin of being an artist, can you give us a little bit of a background? Sure, sure. Well, I grew up in, uh, I was born in New York City. I'm 53 years old, you know, born in 67. Um, I grew up in, in, but I grew up in Pennsylvania and I, I was, um, you know, not really a creative kid, but I was, was interested in the, in, you know, you know, cartoons and, you know, that sort of thing. So that's my kind of my, my foray into anything art, art wise, but my grandmother was a painter and you know, when I, when I, she was an oil painter and she had some great, great pieces that are within the family. But, you know, when she had passed away, I remember being um, at her funeral and we were in the Bronx and she had a studio in, in her basement of her house. And I remember specifically my mom kind of standing there in the basement, just kind of staring at all, all like the paint, the brushes and the paints and thinking, and she said out loud, what, what am I going to do with all this stuff? Right, because she had passed away, and I, and I was standing next to her, and I said to her, "I'll take it. I'll take it home." So I was about four or thirteen when I, when I actually, um, actually, 
you know, took my grandmother's paintbrushes from, from New York to Pennsylvania and really started to, started to paint, you know, on my own, nothing obviously extravagant, but I, I, I grabbed the brushes and kind of started painting then. I, I really didn't continue. I was an athlete, you know, in high school and college, had a full ride um, scholarship to, uh, to my university as, as a division one athlete. And, you know, was focused on, on that for, for a long time. So I wasn't really into the, uh, into the painting or arts, but, you know, was, always loved to go to museums, that sort of thing. And you know, was interested in that kind of stuff. Always, you know, had, had art in my house growing up and, you know, was kind of around it, you know, and then, you know, after college, I went to law school. In law school, I went to, um, you know, worked, worked, worked in the city of Philadelphia as an attorney. So I wasn't, I was never actually went to, was never, never actually trained as an as an artist. Um, but I actually, but I actually loved, loved, loved to paint. You know, just for fun. Um, in about two thousand and two or three, I was living in outside of, in Philadelphia, and was painting a lot. And, and friends, friends of mine had were producer of the television show um, Trading Spaces. All right. So what happened was me and my roommate and they ended, they ended up coming in, we ended up getting on the show and they turned my um, living room into an art gallery with all my art that I just had everywhere, you know, just for fun. So that was kind of the, my kind of my foray into kind of organizing my art into a, seeing my art displayed in, in, in a kind of a proper manner. So to speak, so it kind of it kind of encouraged me to continue to painting and, and, and that sort of thing, you know. But I was still practicing law, well, not nothing, nothing, not professionally, uh, not professional artist. When I moved to Florida um, in 2006, you know, I spent some time down here, you know, working at different different law firms and so that sort of thing. But always painting. A friend of mine had uh, been to, came, was it was at a show down here in, in, in Florida. Uh, a sculptor, a great artist named Bryce Levan Cushing, who I was friends with in Philadelphia for, for 20 years, he, had, he was in my apartment and saw all my paintings and said, "You need to show these paintings to somebody." So, and, and, and I actually ended up getting in a show that he was in, um, and actually first time, really first time displaying my my art in an actual art exhibit, you know, and. From that point on, the, the momentum has been built over, over the years. Met different people, you know, in South Florida arts, you know, Rolando Chang Barrero and different people in, in, in Anthony and, and Trina and just have met many people along the way um, and just started to and started to build that, that momentum so since about 2006. I've been working as a, uh, you know, a full time artist, mm -hmm. you know, and when, the, when, the, when the pandemic, I was also working at working as a nine to five job at a law firm, you know, I, I, stopped practicing, I stopped practicing law 2006 when I moved to Florida, but I was still working in the legal field, you know, doing some administrative stuff. When the pandemic hit, I ended up getting laid off from the law firm job. And I'd always wanted to be a full-time artist, you know, but COVID gave me the push that I needed because I, you know, I wasn't working at nine to five anymore. So I ended up um, working full time, full being a full time artist. And, you know, lo and behold, at that, that time, um, I had met um, these guys, Evan Snow and Andrew Martineau. I was in art for Lauderdale for the for, for past, past couple of years. And they had started this initiative called Zero Empty Spaces, which is, which, which allows, which, which they, which what they do is they approach commercial realtors to, um, you know, go to their empty storefronts and give and, and provide studio space to artists for, for cheap, for cheap rent, $2 a square foot. And it was just a, it was just a piece on that on, on the art law, PDPBS about zero empty spaces. So um, it was a perfect opportunity for me to, you know, kind of venture off and, on, on my own and start to, uh, you know, get a, get a small studio space, you know, 90 square foot so, space in Boca and just kind of put my nose to the grindstone and start, you know, working, you know, as a, as a, as a, as, a, as an artist since since that time, so the past year has been kind of a, kind of like my relaunching of of my art career, which has been going on for about you know since I was thirteen, so to speak. But this has been a year; it's been an amazing year to kind of like be able to, to focus on this without any other distractions mm -hmm. besides COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So, um, Scott. Uh, so basically, you're a self-taught painter. 
self-taught painter. Um, I like to call myself really like a soul doodler. I'm a high level doodler, which I like to say, because, <clears throat> you know, I, ne I never went to art school. I never, um, you know, I spent a lot of time. And if you, if you look in my, my college notebooks and my high school notebooks and my law school notebooks, there's just tons and tons of doodles. So, you know, I was always kind of, kind of, you know, in that, in that mindset of always trying to, you know, drawing something or doodling something or, or shapes and sizes or, or numbers or just lines and scribbles and, excuse me. And uh, it just happened, you know, it, it just had been built over time from there. And, you know, as I was able to, you know, afford paints and brushes, I, I just been able to, you know, build the time and space to expand my doodles to a, to a whole other level, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and just a couple of questions, um, Scott, before we look at some of your, your work and have you elaborate on it. Uh, during this time um, when you were uh, practicing law and even, you know, a little bit before that, when you were, you know, started to get in, into painting. And I, I love the beautiful story where, you know, your, your grandmother's brushes were, were passed on to you. What were you actually painting and who have been your influences artistically? I, I mean, in, in the beginning, well, when I, when I was in, when I was living in Philadelphia, so I was, I was painting a lot of watercolors, you know, for some reason, the watercolors were, I, I guess they were, I won't say they were easy, but they, it was, it, they were clean, meaning I didn't, it wasn't, they weren't messy. So it, they were easy, they were, they were inexpensive. Um, the paper was inexpensive. There wasn't a lot of, and I paint a lot on canvas now with acrylic. So it's a whole other, um, I'm not, the, I'm, not, I'm not the most clean or, or, or organized artist, so to speak. My, my, my studio is kind of messy. But at that time, watercolors just seemed to be um, an e the medium that was, 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 was I, I was drawn to it for some reason. I, I liked the way that, it, that the, the texture of the, how, how the watercolor looked on paper. I love being able to kind of like, you know, I, I never really, 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 really sketched anything at that time. I wasn't really sketching paintings. But I was, um, I like to be able to kind of use like the, the fine tip brush that a watercolor kind of required. So I was, you know, I was painting a lot of, um, you know, buildings and cities and, and a lot of, I was working a lot with um, perspective. You know, I, I was trying, I was trying to um, learn because I was always walking, I would walk to work in, in this in, in Center City, Philadelphia. And I was always trying to kind of, figure out a way to paint a painting that was like I wanted to be inside the painting so to speak like I wanted to be flat and so like I was like standing at the street and, and like kind of look down the street look down a city street and paint that so I spent a lot of time like trying to figuring out and, and I, figuring out like like how to make a a painting you know have some depth right I never you know I wasn't I never googled anything you know, I never looked it up on YouTube. I only looked at YouTube at that time. Maybe they did. I don't know. But I, I never went to the library. But I was always kind of trying, like, you know, over and over again with my paintings, trying to figure out a way to, you know, build some kind of depth with 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 this with the city street, this urban landscape, so to speak. That was that was what I was painting a lot. I was painting painting a lot. I was living in Philadelphia, painting a lot of a lot of flags. You know, I, I for some reason I was I. Uh, was living in the art museum area, and I was, you know, I was, I was a young guy, and I was, and there's a lot, lot of flags in the city of Philadelphia at that point in time. Just people I had outside, you know, it's a, like a very patriotic city. And I think about whatever, um, I guess it was about whatever the it was George George Bush W Bush was one of the Gulf Wars. I, I painted one of my I painted the flag, and I remember painting it in reverse. And I called the painting "Backwards Nation." I was very like I wasn't really a political person, but I was. But the war at, at that time, one of the one of the Gulf Wars, it was, it seemed so ridiculous to me at the time. I don't know why I was like even even thinking about it so much. But I remember painting this flag, and I called the painting "Backwards Nation," because it just and it just I still have the painting here somewhere. It's it just uh, one of my and, and watercolor and and but I remember. It was just like it, I loved the way that it, that it looked. I was working working with like thin kind of tissue paper, and it just it struck me that and, and the flag to me, the colors of the flag were just very 
profound and beautiful and and I, and I just kept painting flags mm -hmm. uh, I call myself the black Betsy Ross mm -hmm. <laughs> you know because I just like I felt like kind of like you know kept painting kept painting mm -hmm. them and, mm -hmm. and what about influences Scott have there been any artists um along the way that you you know that you kind of um you know not necessarily emulated because you have your own style but that you kind of were attracted to as artists I mean it, it's 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 funny I, I think um I was thinking about that today because I was thinking about like what what artists I I I, I loved um um what's his name I forget I can look it up it was the artist the the, the Partridge family remember the show the Partridge family Mondrian Mondrian okay yeah. so I for some reason was and I had no idea who that who that was at the time I I was infatuated by the Partridge family bus right. So for some, and I didn't even, I actually Googled it, I looked it up today to see who it was. Like, cause I, I'm thinking about my paintings and I think that my, I was always influenced by that, by that color scheme of Maudriana on the Partridge family bus for some reason. And I always thought about it. So when I'm, and I was doing the, looking at my paintings today, thinking about it today, I think I was really subliminal, subliminally influenced by Maudriana by the Partridge family. I love that show for some reason, right? And for some reason I was like, that bus is really, really cool. So I think that that really wasn't one of my early influences um, thinking about it, you know, later on. Um, I, as time, you know, went on, I have, a, um, you know, I, I love Picasso. I love um, Du Buffet. Is a, I'm a big fan of Du Buffet. Um, I love John Singer Sargent. I, I love Andy Warhol. I love you know, a, a lot of different artists, but um, I, I think, and, and, and it's funny because it, it, I didn't notice the people, people have told me, because I, like I said, I didn't go to art school. I didn't, I don't really, I didn't really know a lot about art, except when I, you know, I would see a painting, maybe remember the name of the artist, but not really think about it. Cause I wasn't, I was just like, and, but someone had mentioned to me that, that my art reminded them of something of a, of a Cobra artist. Um, and I had no idea what I was like, I was at some art show and they like, they like, do you know, do you know Cobra? And I was, I, I had no idea. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm not, you know, I wasn't in the books and that. So when I, when I would, I would always, obviously when someone told me that, I, that, that my art reminded me of something that they saw that I, that and I looked it up and be like, oh yeah, this is kind of cool. This is, it's similar, but, but it's funny a lot of the time, uh, like, but I had never heard of Cobra, you know, I never looked up Cobra, never th thought about Cobra. But my art, um, um, apparently, and then, and then since then, I, I, I obviously they you know learn more about it. But you know, I, I think I'm constantly being um, influenced and inspired by 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 many different artists, um, local artists too. You know, um, people that I that I meet. You know, just even you know, I, I think even a lot too. Um, if you look at some of my, my art, it's it's like. For some, back to television, I was always interested in like when, for some reason, the the the, the, the fuzz like when you turn out when the when the TV like has a kind of like a like a buzz or fuzz whatever like the, like the, like the dots of, of like when the television is kind of like the TV goes off and it doesn't do it any, anymore, but like when the TV like blanks out, like just like the little pixelations of, of things, it just is kind of for some reason that that pattern fascinated me and I was like and I and I, when I do some of my paintings now they're like kind of like zoomed in versions of the uh mm -hmm. the, the like the some of like the range some of the heads that I do like, like zoomed in versions of these pixelated things from like who knows <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. yeah thank you so much for sharing that Scott I, I can see those influences um in your work uh so I'd like to go ahead and and um start to share them unless there's anything else that, that you'd like to um yeah. let us know no. Okay. Right. okay, very good. Give me just a moment and I'll, I'll pull up the first image, which is um, sure. from the caribou exhibit. So just a moment. Okay, I see it here. So you just wanted to talk about it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so this this um, this started out to be. It's funny we talked about like the like the, the pixelation. Um, 
this flag, I, I wanted, I was, I, when I talked to Trina and Anthony, I wanted to do a kind of a COVID related piece. Um, and it started out to be a, a piece with just, it was like 10, I wanted to do, I was, I was thinking about the number of COVID deaths. So it's kind of like, kind of a deep thinking piece. Uh, the number of COVID deaths that you know, I was looking at is it started the piece that the, the show started in January. I started the piece in probably, I don't know, December or November. And I was always like watching the news and just watching the number of, let me turn off the horn for a second. Watching the, uh... sorry about that. I wanted to turn off the, my AC so I didn't hear any buzzing. <laughs> um, I wanted to, to, to do a piece where the, uh, that kind of represented the number of COVID deaths because I was always seeing these numbers on TV, you know, 100,000, 200,000, 250,000, all these numbers. So I, I wanted to do a, a piece where I, I, I wanted to put like 300,000 300, boxes on a canvas. And that, that that's a lot of boxes because that, that was the number of, I, I figured that by the time the, the COVID, by the time the, the caribou exhibit started, that would be the number of, Deaths that we be around, you know, and it was off by about fifty thousand at that at that point. But I was sort of, the, and I and I had you know got it. This is a canvas. It's like fifty four by I think about eight feet long. So I was I got a big ruler or whatever it was, a stick or, or a piece of plywood and started drawing lines and lines and lines and lines and just sort of, and boxes and boxes and boxes and and you know I was counting them and and you know the um, the 300,000 boxes would it was was a lot of boxes so I, I kind of stepped back a little bit and it ended up um, doing 10,000 boxes so there's 50 rows across the top um, and 200 rows down the, the down the, the vertical all right so there's actually if you, if you I can send you a close-up of it but there's like there's and and, and, I, and I wanted to do with it and to, I wanted to do kind of a color coordinated, like a Maudrian sort of painting where each race would be a different color of, of, the, of the desk. Because a lot of us, you know, I, I personally didn't really know anybody that by the name who had personally died of COVID, you know, at, the, at that point. I only know one person at this point, but uh, I wanted to kind of do represent, do, have, I thought each color would, color would be interesting you know, the black for the African Americans and just different colors for different races to see how that would kind of look on a kind of like a, uh, uh, on a graph, so to speak, right? So I pulled back on that too, because I, I, I ended up focusing only on the African American population. So the, the, the African American population, and this is before I put there, before I even thought about making it into a flag, right? Um, so I, I had painted the painting and without the red and blue. And I just had put the black dots to represent and 18% of the, the, the deaths at that point by the CDC were African-American deaths. So I had, you know, painted, you know, by percentage wise, each block on the 10th out of the 10,000, put that into the, um, uh, into the graph, right? And then I stepped back again and you know, I wanted to kind of, and I talked to Trina and Anthony about it and trying to make the piece, piece more personal to my, my style, because I'm not Mondrian, obviously, and, I'm, and, and you know, um, and I thought about it and we talked about it and, and I, I, I determined that I should make it into a flag, which is what I'm, which I'm, which I'm sort of known for. And so I ended up, you know, um, painting the, uh, the, the flag images, the, uh, also the, you know, the, the representing representing the uh, you know the people people that have died. And if, and if, if you get a zoom of that painting, you'll see that those are all actually faces, um, faces in the um, hmm. on the flag. So there's there's different faces on that. So it's it's a. Uh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you get really close, you'll see there's there's actually. Exactly. There you go. Perfect. So there, there's, if you see the eyes and noses and mouths on there and, and um, there's, there's, 
and I do a lot of face paintings too. So I wanted to kind of represent the, 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 the deaths and the flag and the United States and the, and kind of like, you know, I kind of like drag the, um, the, 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 the red to represent sort of like, you know, kind of like the, we have, kind of, we have blood on our, on our hands um, because of the number that people have died and that maybe shouldn't have died based on depending on who you talk to, obviously. But uh, it really was, to me, I wanted to, it was end up being a, a powerful piece for me because, um, like I said, the, the flag, to me, meant something, mm -hmm. right? And, and it, like I did back in '92, when I thought it was a backwards nation. This is kind of a continuation of the of the backwards nation concept that I've been thinking about for a long time. And you know, and and, and it's and it's cool. And I think talking to people at the at the at the, at the exhibit, they don't really see the flag. Sometimes they have to step back. If you look close, you see, you see the faces. If you step back, you see the flags. If you, you know, if you if you if you read the the, um, the artist statement, you understand what it what it's about. So, mm -hmm. I, I definitely, um, you know, I, I I love the piece. It's it's a, uh, I think it, it it's it's great for the space. I'm, I'm I'm grateful that Anthony and and you know and, and Trina gave me the opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to display it this way, you know, you can display it vertically or horizontally too. Um, doesn't really matter uh, depending on how you look at it, but this, this is a, you know, I painted it with, with knowing that it would be, it would be hung, it would be hung vertically. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, want, and I kind of wanted the person too, to kind of, to just the, the enormity of the amount of deaths. I wanted the person to be standing there kind of like looking up at the, like looking up and saying like, wow, this is, this is a lot of people that have died. And, 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 uh, Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Yeah, and it's such an interesting way, you know, to represent, um, you know, COVID and and the the amount of deaths, and you know, also in kind of a very mathematical and and you know precision, you know, uh, type of way. And it's very striking. I remember when I was at the preview, which I was, you know, so grateful to be at. You know, standing in front of it is very very striking. And I love your explanation, kind of going into you know, zooming in and, and all the different faces representing, you know, those, you know, that have transitioned from COVID. And, uh, yeah, and, and, the, and the flag, the, the title of the piece is called Black Abacus, mm -hmm. right? So it's really just a counting, the counting of, 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 of numbers of, of numbers of just like really nameless and, and faceless people. And each, each square is really like a, like a cemetery plot of an unknown person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful tribute. I also found it interesting, Scott, that the, the concept of the flag was sort of born within the process because you, you started, as you said, to kind of sketch out in, in a way the, you know, the shapes and, and you, you, know, you had your ruler and you were kind of getting all the measurements and getting the space as, as you wanted to present it. And then as that unfolded, then the idea of the flag kind of came about. Yeah, it, it really, it really did be, because I, I, I think um, when I, when I was talking to to um, I, I, I had shown Trina, Trina and Anthony the, the kind of an earlier version with without the the flag portion of it, and, and they kind of kind of remind me that they said that that that, that the painting is great, but it's really we want to see you more you in the painting, right? And you know, like I said, I'm not really an inside the lines, clean line painter. I'm an outside the lines person. I don't really worry about perfection so much. Um, and I think when they reminded me of who I was, sometimes of who, who I am as, a, as an artist, you know, it gave me more, a, a, a better idea of, you know, what, what, I, what I wanted to do, what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and, 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 the, and the flag was, <clears throat> was born out of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I, it's it's a. Uh, I I love it. Like I said, I, I love how it, how I love how we how we hang it hung it. I love the, mm -hmm. um, you know, looking at it here on the screen. It's re it's really, you know, I, I really want the the person that's looking at at it to get up close and be like, what what's going on, here? And I'm glad. Thank you for zooming in to to show, you know, to show your 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 viewers, you know how detailed and how, how how specific it was like and they said like like the uh the, it took me a long time to and recounting and recounting the lines and the boxes and the squares and the and, and uh 
it was it was it was a a labor of love for sure right right yes absolutely um if there's anything else that you'd like to share about this or we can move on to the next one I'll we, we can move on no i just like i encourage anyone any of your viewers you know to definitely you know there's there's 25 other great artists in the exhibit it's a great exhibit i'm sure you, you interviewed a lot of them on the on the um on your on your show and um it's it's a great opportunity to see some you know some other you know great great palm beach artists that, that uh you know who otherwise not might be might be seen if not for you know the cultural council and trina and anthony and the motivation of, for the whole the whole thing so definitely get get out there to it yeah absolutely it, it's an amazing exhibit it, it's fantastic it's so well thought out and it's it's so diverse in, in the different art that it um you know presents as well and the different messages um yes um okay i think we'll go ahead and go to the next one if, if you're ready scott sure sure all right okay wow okay here this this is um this is a work on paper this is the size is i think about 10 feet by um Eight feet, pretty sure about the, the size. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a acrylic on on paper, and I, I first made this painting. I, I work a lot with um, a, a, a something called irreversible projects, which is um, it's a it's a Miami couple, Norton Blazevic and Alejandro Mendoza, who I met um, years ago, and I've been to Art Basel and uh, Art Aqua at Art Basel during Art Basel and, and Spectrum and you know they they are um, big big mentors and curators of mine and internationally known um, curators and, and artists and um, they had I, I I did a show with them in Miami a few years ago um, where and, and what they do it's, it's great great about them is that they they kind of they kind of get artists to to um, you know get art into kind of like unconventional places right so this this ended up being at, at the at a at a hotel lobby um with a bunch of my other art in, in brickle miami mm -hmm. um at the opening of at the opening of a of a, of a relaunching of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of the novatel hotel in miami and in, in, in you know miami in miami and uh you know and and they they were sort of encouraged me to do paintings on a larger scale okay and and that and, and and there were there was there was a big wall there that that they that they that was available you know for, for a piece for me to make so they said here they said here's a piece of paper we know you're an, you know how you're you're an artist and, and i want i want you to um you know to go to town right so basically with with with, with these are these are again the, the, the colors of modrian with the kind of the feel of picasso and the the flavor of, of, of I'm a big jazz fest fan of jazz and mm -hmm. you know simplicity and and I, I love these the the eyes and the, I love the the I want the viewer to kind of notice that there's different you know many many different faces in there some of the eyes are noses some of the noses are eyes some of the mouths are noses some of the mouths are eyes you know it's it's really a kind of a puzzle of 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 color and you know, and, and a, a lot of my art has has over over the past few years, kind of, I, I love painting this. I love painting this way. Mm -hmm. I love, and 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 not nothing is sketched out at all. This is not a sketch. Nothing is thought out. All I'm doing is I, I have a, I have a big blank piece of the paper, and I just put get and I do that and I paint the black lines first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the black line the black lines are. The ones that are that are done kind of freehand, freestyle, um, whatever happens to fall, happens to fall where 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 it may, where it does, and you know then once all the once all the black lines are are painted, I go back and fill in like really like paint by numbers to tell you the truth, you know just just paint painting the the colors that that are, you know, close to me in my studio, not really thinking about you know. You know which color goes where. I like I, I do like red lips. So I just just to make it kind of obvious for some for someone to uh, 
to, to know that there's, that there's those are, those could be lips, right? Mm -hmm. So that or, or and so so that's really the only color that I um let's say uh specific, not specific. I, I'm I, I do that on purpose. The red lips. Mm -hmm. Everything else is pretty random. You mm -hmm. know, it's funny people. People said to me, "Oh, you're a, you're a great colorist," and I and I kind of laugh because I'm really just grabbing the color that's the color that is uh, that is you know filled that, that that that's not empty on, in my studio. So if so if I'm like I have a, I have a thing of paint and it's it's empty, I just I throw that one away and grab a full a full you know bottle of paint and then use that one that's next. So mm -hmm. it really is. But I obviously I got the colors, but it's it's a uh, I, I love these. I, I, I kind of, I, I want to, um, I painted this, I painted a mural in a similar style, you know, a few years ago. And my dream is to get a, I guess, get a, get a huge, big wall and just paint like, you know, this, this style of, I call these like, I call these, um, Picasso doodles. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm like the black Picasso. It's just, just mm -hmm. a doodle with, uh, with, you know, with this, just with color and vibrancy and and happiness and you know I want to I want you know little kids to be like I could probably do that or one parents would say I, you could probably do that and I and, and and you know kind of encourage people to look at it with a little bit of you know people always ask you know ask me what's the, what's that about right mm -hmm. it's not really a, about anything it's just about you know kind of really joy and you know accessibility you know, it's not really, you don't have to really, I mean, I don't, as far as I know, you know, for my really intellectualizing what it's, what's there. It's, it's not like, there's no real specific message, except that, you know, it's a bunch of eyes and noses and heads and, and people with different, you know, different personalities and, and that, that come through when you look at them. And, 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 one, and one day, you know, you, you might see a, 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 a specific form that's ahead the next day you might see, you know, another head, you know, or another face or another eye or another, like, you know, you'll see like these, these, um, you know, some of the lips could go to, can, can go to, to go to many different people, faces, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So your process, Scott, is very spontaneous. It's not, you don't like to think it out. You almost like you really want to be in the moment. It's like what pain is available. You start off with like, you know, the black lines and then you start to, to fill it in and you just kind of like let it kind of come out is, is the way that, that I'm getting it. Absolutely. Absolutely. There, there's no spontaneous is, is a great, you know, great verb or whatever the, whatever the word, it's a great word to, to use. It's very, you know, I sometimes put music on sometimes, sometimes not music. It just, 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 you know, go with the flow of. You know what's what 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 kind of happens? You know when when the when the when the brush hits the piece of paper, and you know like I said, don't 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 get too caught up in you know perfection or staying inside the lines or if there's like you know sometimes the uh, you know if the like looking at it, like sometimes the, the I try to like paint a couple layers to to get to get a very um you know bold. The color is very bold, but you mm -hmm. know sometimes you just gotta like say, okay, that's that's enough. You know, it's not gonna be the perfectly smooth paint line, and it's not gonna be whatever. It's just it is what it is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and you can. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I I think I, I think a lot of artists get, get caught up in, you know, perfection, and I, that, that's something that I try to avoid, you know, because, you know. It's like it's like oh that that, that eye is not the way I want it to be or you know this line it's like it's like I can go on can go on forever at some point you got to you got to let the paint dry and you know hang it on the wall <laughs> right right all right Scott awesome uh, I I love your elaboration and, and your insights into your work um, we can go ahead and move on to the next piece sure. if you feel like you're ready all right sure here we go. Okay, great. This is a this is another this is this is a painting that that I um, I'm working on now. That is this is in my home studio here in Highland Beach, mm -hmm. and I'm working. That I have a show um, coming up. It starts starts next week um, in Miami at Miami Dade College Hialeah. So um, 
working again with with irreversible projects in Nor Place of and, and Alejandro um, down in Miami, and again, um, not really. It's a, it's a college art gallery solo solo show. So this is this is going to be one of the one of the main. Um, this this is an eighteen foot long painting, mm -hmm. um, and what and once we hang it on the wall at this at the um, at the gallery, I'm going to be able to actually extend the painting. Like make make a, I'm going to paint a frame around it, and the frame is going to be kind of a continuation of <clears throat> of the painting. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to kind of kind of you know grab the black lines that are at the edges of the uh, edges of the um, of the canvas and just keep going. So to make the painting even bigger. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that. You know, this is again, just kind of, uh, kind of, um, I'm calling this the, the, the first two things that, that I painted were the, were the, were the red and blue eyes in the middle, kind of like an infinity sign. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, like, I'm thinking about calling this one. I haven't, it hasn't been named yet, like infinity eyes. So that's like, the, it started out to be a, like an infinity, like an infinity sign in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I just kind of like, yeah, exactly right there, right, right. There's two eyes, right? Yeah, exactly. The blue, the red eye, the red with the, the red eye with the, um, I can't. Yeah, right in the middle, there's, and there's, there's two eyes there. You see, there's like a yellow smiley face below it. And uh, exactly, right there, those two. So that's kind of like the, if you like look, do the outline of the, the infinity side or the, the side figure eight, that's the first thing I, I painted on, 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 the, on the white canvas. Mm -hmm. And it kind of went from there back and forth. Mm -hmm. So thinking about calling it that for some reason, I don't know why, but that's where my it, it took me at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just kind of like a kind of like a fun, fun painting, um, lots of color, very Partridge Family bus, busty, <laughs> so to speak. Um, Motrian, I gotta look. I'm gonna look. I mean, to, to me, it, it really. Uh, I, it really kind of brought me back when I was thinking about that today. Um, like where, like what my, I thought you, I knew you were going to kind of ask me that question. And I was thinking, where, where did it all start? And I think it was the Partridge family mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. in terms of my influences on, on art. So. Right. I love this, how we get a nice feel of, you know, you and your studio and the work in process. So I'm so glad you included this in, in, um, one of the images for us to present. Oh yeah, no, it's great. I, I love. I love. I, I, I said I have a studio, a studio at uh, Zero Empty Spaces in, in downtown Boca. But this is this is actually in my in my in my house here, my in my living room. Mm -hmm. um, I've had I've had to I had to move things around. But I have a nice big long wall, um, and uh, and I just like this. Is, I'm going to paint in here, and hopefully, I don't get paint on the on the uh, on the floor, on the tile, but. Mm -hmm. We'll work on that later. <laughs> Scott, we have time to uh, look at one more. So okay. um, we'll go ahead and move on to that if that's good with you. Sure, sure. All right. <laughs> okay, this is this is great. Um, as a, this was painted, in, I do a lot of um, a lot of meetings on Zoom, like a lot of us do now. We're all, me and you were on Zoom right now, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So. It's kind of it was kind of a new when, when the pandemic started, you know, the, our whole entire a lot of us our whole entire lives, we were we were connecting with people in a, in a different way. So um, when I found myself on a lot of Zoom meetings and seeing Zoom on, you know, people talk about Zoom, 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 Zoom. That was always people talked about. That. I never heard of Zoom before. I don't know about you. I wasn't a person that was in the Zoom world or you know communicating. Um, and in, in any way with my with a laptop or anything so i found myself looking at these people's heads and, and i'm and i love painting heads i'm like i love to paint heads so i mean abstract sort of like these smiley face heads but like what i call them and uh and so one day i was just i was just you know i had a i had a canvas and i was and i started to, i started to paint these heads and i was like this is I, I, I'm painting. I'm painting my computer screen. I'm painting this, this this big, this big Zoom screen, and then I just you know just kept going. And you know I, I was like again, it, and it's all, it all goes back to really this kind of the modern um, pixelation 
you know, kind of order, order disorder, you know, with the boxes, mm -hmm. you know, for some reason, I, um, I find myself, um, you know, they're not perfect boxes. Like I said, I'm not into perfection, but there is some level of, um, I don't know whether it's consistency or, or, or order, you know, lined up, um, faces and symmetry, I guess the word is, you know, so I do so tend to, when I'm, when I'm working, um, that at least for this painting, it came to mind. And of course, because <coughs> the, the, the piece of canvas that I had, this, the, you see how the zoom is at an angle, mm -hmm. the top of that, that that's the, 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 the canvas is like a, like a remnant, I guess you would call it. So it's not a square piece. The the, the 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 if you see the yellow on the yellow on top of the M, that's the wall of my of my studio. So oh, okay. Yeah, so that's it's not it's not a square piece. That that's just the that's so that's just another another painting that I use. So I'll, I'll uh, whatever whatever canvas I have lying around, you know, I, I was too lazy or whatever too. I didn't really think about cutting it. So when I when I got to the end and I was like, oh, this could be a zoom, I just. Squished, I squished this word zoom in the space that I had available. It wasn't really, it wasn't really thought out that, that deeply, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it also, yes, yeah, yeah, Scott, it also has like a very uh, whimsical feel um, as well. Do you, do you feel that also? Yeah, I, I, th I think, I think when you, when you're looking at, at my feet, always, I, I think when you're looking at, 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 at my work, I want you to smile. I want you to laugh. I want you to be. I want you to be like, what is this guy's crazy, right? You know, it's like, what is he on? You know, when he painted this, you know. And, I, and I'm and I'm a, a guy that I I'm clean and sober for 14 years, so you know, a, a lot of my it's 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 it doesn't come from any place but a spiritual spiritual place and a and a place of uh, you know cl cl clear mind mm -hmm. for as far as artists. Anyway, this an artist is gonna clear mind for an artist, you know. It's just just fun, you know. Just just uh, you know, I want the I want the viewer to just to be like just be like oh, that. That that's they can point to this. Oh, that that's that one's me. That one's me. That one's me. And it's like I want them to you know kind of look look and look in the mirror and kind of see see. I want them maybe want me to be their mirror and like like maybe they, they can see themselves in one of my paintings somewhere along the way. Even with the other ones with the faces, mm -hmm. you know. There's the each, each little face, smile, teeth, lips, eyes, nose. Each has their own personality. And and this is kind of this, the same thing. If you look on a look look on a zoom, you know, the, the exact opposite of the uh, you know the COVID painting, which is like we don't know what the personalities of the people. We don't know anything about them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just kind of like you know numbers. Mm -hmm. And this this is kind of like more lively and, and life, and you know, gives some kind of a context of, of what you might be feeling sitting on a sitting in your house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like we are, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen share. Okay. All right. We have a, a, a few more minutes. This has been uh, so wonderful to, to get to know your art and, and to get all your, your insight and, and, and your background. And um, I, I love the, the message that you have, which is really like about, you know, um, just almost like childlike innocence. And how you said in the beginning, Scott, that you know you you were interested when you were very little with cartoons, and then kind of you know um, progressing, I think, into your your background in in law, you know, where it's such an you know exactitude and kind of breaking things down and and that whole whole world of you know exactness and whatnot. And then you kind of like open and, and free yourself in in your. I heart. think I think um, I I was telling someone today. It's like I, I I always kind of wanted to live in this on Sesame Street, right? Mm -hmm. This is like a it's like a Sesame Street life, you know, painting, having fun, just just you know. And I feel hopefully that that kind of comes across in my 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 artwork, just like you know, it's just fun and you know, don't think so much, but think a little bit if you have to, and if you do, hopefully it'll be have some value to your to your mindset and to what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Yes. Scott, thank you so much for being our, our guest artist today and, and sharing the caribou piece and, and getting us a little sneak peek into your studio and, and some of the art pieces that, um, that we also looked at. Thank you so much.
Awesome. I, I appreciate it. You know, if, if uh, any of your viewers are going to be in Miami, Dade College Hialeah, the Visage is the name of the show. will be up in about, in about a week or so. And it'll be up for a couple months. So, uh, you know, that would, that would be awesome for them to maybe pop in down there as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, we're going to close the show out. We like to uh, let our guest artists provide any closing comments. So I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of pass the mic on to you. And um, what closing comments would you like to share? And then if you could let us know how to stay in touch with you as well. Sure. No, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to um, talk to you and your viewers. I was, it was great to meet you at the, at the Caribou Show. And I'm glad that you know, you're, you're, you are personally making an effort to get the word out for us because like I said, in, in these times, it's, 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 people don't know that, that there's things available to do safely with masks, all that sort of thing. And the Cultural Council and, and, the, and, the, and the Palm Beach College is definitely, I mean, the uh, Miami Dade College is definitely using, making all precautions for, 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 for a show. So, you know, you can, you can check me out on my website um, scottyjart.com, S-C-O-T-T-Y-J-Art.com. Instagram is my, my most um, utilized tool. Um, it's at Scott Art, at Scott Art. Um, and, you know, you can, you can find me at Zero Empty Spaces um, in Boca, Boca Center, right by the Boca, Boca Mall. Uh, my studio is there. Stop by, give us a call by appointment. You know, I have, I have, um, you know, I, I have stuff available through Ted's Artworks in, in, in Fort Lauderdale, um, just just all over the place. So also look for me on Art Loft, which is going to be on PBS um, next. I think next week we're going to they're going to have there's going to be a I did an interview with them a little bit ago. So hopefully that'll that'll be coming up pretty soon. So I'm looking forward to a great 2021. Yeah, yeah. You have some exciting things uh, going on. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah, Scott, it's been such a joy to connect with you and to explore your art and, and to get kind of like, you know, see things from your perspective and kind of step into your shoes. And um, we wish you much success with um, the Caribou exhibit still going on and then your upcoming uh, exhibit, which is uh, this weekend and, and all your artistic endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you everyone for watching today. Again, thank you, Scott, for being our guest artist. Please stay in touch with us on social media. Find Art and Talk on YouTube and also on Facebook. We appreciate your support. And we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed. <laughs>